In general, we have the equation y double prime plus by prime plus cy equals g of t. General second order equation with constant coefficients, uh, non-homogeneous because of the g of t. Now often you have an a in front of y double prime, but we can divide this entire equation by a and uh, get it into this form without loss of any solutions. So we make the assumption y equals some multiple of e to the rt. The a I've got here has nothing to do with this a or the a I'm going to get down here. It's just a reminder that that's kind of what we do. Or we just say y equals e to the rt and understand that any constant multiple of that function is still going to be a solution to the equation. But we make that substitution and solve the homogeneous equation where we ignore the g of t. We solve the equation equal to 0. Now, uh, we have two methods of dealing with the function g of t over here. We get our particular solution, again, something <coughs> I assume you're familiar with, by either variation of parameters or undetermined coefficients. As it turns out, in many of the physics applications, probably in most, g of t is going to be some sort of a sine or a cosine function, and we're not going to need to resort to variation of parameters. We can just uh, deal with this by undetermined coefficients, and that's pretty much going to be the case with what we do in this course. So anyhow, using this substitution, we very easily uh, solve the homogeneous or convert the homogeneous equation into this algebraic equation with solutions r equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4c over 2 by the quadratic formula, leading us to the solution, general solution, y equals c1e2, I'm not going to read it to you, well, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4c over 2. Um, we do the plus case here, we do the minus case here, and uh, of course using the Euler identity, uh, well, we don't use the Euler identity at this point, we get this general solution. And we can factor out uh, e to the negative b over 2t, get the solution into this form, which might or might not be useful. This form is useful if the discriminant, the b squared minus 4c in this case, happens to be negative, in which case we're going to apply the Euler identity, e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now this should all be familiar to anybody who's been through uh, the material in differential equations course. We're going to apply this to the case of a pendulum. Okay, for a pendulum, x double prime, well, x is going to be your position function. The net force on a pendulum is going to be the mass times the acceleration the second derivative of the position function being the acceleration function. For a pendulum, an ideal pendulum, that net force is equal to negative kx. We have a restoring force, a linear restoring force of the nature f equals negative kx. So we immediately get this equation, which we can rearrange into this form, where uh, the value of the c is k over m, and b is, in this case, 0. Now we're going to deal with the case where b isn't 0, but let's just do this solution to make sure we're kind of oriented. So we have a solution to this is x equals plus or minus i omega t with omega equal to the square root of k over m. And I'm not going to go through the details of how we get that, uh, except to say that, OK, b is 0, so uh, this negative b plus b squared minus 2c minus 4c uh, becomes 0 here, 0 here, and the 4c, and I've got 4ac here, but really the a is 0 uh, according to the convention that we use here. Uh, the c is just uh, the square root of k over, uh, the c is just k over m, so that. Uh, and I've got a mistake here. That should be 4 k over m, negative 4 k over m. 
under here. When we take the square root, then we get two i times the square root of k over m. When we put that back into here, we're dividing by the two, so we get just an i square root of k over m, and the square root of k over m is then omega, and it's instead of i square root of k over m, it's i omega times t. And this can be rearranged, can be expressed in the form then c1 times the cosine of omega t plus i sine of omega t. That would be the solution corresponding to the positive i omega t. Solution corresponding to the negative i omega t, you're going to have a negative here. So you're going to have C1 times one solution plus C2 times the other. We can rearrange that. The coefficient of cosine, if we collect the cosine terms, is going to be C1 plus C2. Uh, the coefficient of the sine is going to be C1 minus C2. So that we have this form. Now, uh, C1 and C2 are complex. So in making this uh, the transition, from this step to this step, we want to come over here and see what happens. So C1 and C2 are complex, so that C1 plus C2, this coefficient, is going to equal some complex number B. C1 minus C2 is going to also be a complex number. And I'm going to say that that complex number is negative IC, where C is just equal to the negative of this complex number divided by I. Now, C1 and C2 are complex. B and C can be complex numbers. So given any B and C, we can solve for C1 and C2, meaning that we can express this solution as B cosine of omega t plus C sine of omega t, where B and C are complex numbers. So we don't need the I here. That's absorbed. And actually, that's taken care of by the negative I in front of the C over here. So that uh, this will be identical to this, provided, again, that B and C, uh, that C1 and C2 satisfy these equations, and they can. Point is, for any B and C, so that our general solution will be B cosine of omega t plus C sine of omega t. Now, B and C could be real, and if so, then we can say that x equals A sine of omega t plus theta naught where the omega and the theta naught, well, the omega is the same, and the coefficient a here and the theta naught are related to the b and the c here just by double angle formulas and such. Simple trigonometric formulas that I'm not going to detail here. So the bottom line then is that your pendulum can be modeled either by, uh, the, the motion of the pendulum can be modeled by either this function or this function, the values of b and c, which are equivalent to the values of a and theta naught, or a and phi, are determined by the initial conditions on the pendulum. This leads us to the model that we had at the, uh, when we analyzed simple harmonic motion in the preceding semester where we have the reference circle. And we can model the motion by, let's say, the x motion. Of course, the x motion would, uh, on this model, would actually be a cosine. But since we have the <coughs> theta naught, uh, we can make adjustments there. Um, so we have motion around the reference circle starting at position theta naught with angular frequency omega, the angular velocity of the point moving around the reference circle. And we might, since we're using x here, it might make more sense to you if we had a cosine here. And we could certainly do that. We could use either a sine or a cosine uh, to convert this form into this form. Of course, uh, if you use a cosine, you're going to get a different theta naught than you would if you use a sine. You're going to get the same amplitude either way.